So now, let's let's get into let's get into some of the issues of this campaign. You've spoken quite forcefully about the need, the the, the urgent need for Sudbury to have a lobbyist registry. Maybe walk our listeners through what a lobbyist registry is and why you think Sudbury needs one. You know, as 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 urgently as you, you seem to think it does. Yeah. Well, again, one of the huge issues uh, in this election has been firing the ombudsman. Uh, other people are talking about bringing in an integrity commissioner. When I'm knocking on doors, people are telling me that they see uh, road crews put in half as much material into the roads as they're supposed to. Uh, there's rumors of, of uh, people from different companies meeting with counselors and having fancy dinners and, and things like that. And I have no idea whether that's true or not. Um, it may not be illegal in any way or really wrong. They may have gone to high school together and they're friends, and that's fine. You can do that. What a lobbyist registry does is, through the bylaw, it sets out what is and isn't acceptable lobbying behavior. Um, so calling up city staff to let them know about a new paving technology is something that you would hope happens so that the city is aware of what's going on. And, it, and in some cases, it can be permeable, new permeable paving materials that reduce runoff into our storm sewers. So that's a good thing. Um, in other cases, lobbying may be taking somebody out to a restaurant and uh, you know buying a couple bottles of wine or whatever. And that's where it starts to get a little bit improper and improper influence. So what a lobbyist registry does, it sets up the rules. It requires that a corporation or in some cases even a, an incorporated advocacy group uh, needs to register with the city and log any lobbying activity that they, that they do. So if I was, um, let's say I, I, I owned a, a new business, so um, I wanted to open up a factory in Sudbury. Uh, I'd call up a counselor and say, and talk about uh, the need for this industry, uh, look for land available, you know, all kinds of things, um, the usual stuff that you would do. I would then go on the website, log that I had made that phone call, also any emails, or meetings that we'd had, um, just to, and briefly describe that it's about locating a factory in Sudbury. At, when it comes to a council meeting, or if you are, let's say you're the Chamber of Commerce or your local advocacy group, and you want to know what's going on, you can look up that activity. And if you don't want that kind of a factory to, to locate there, then that's an opportunity for you to then write into your counselor and say, as your constituent, I want you to know that I'm opposed to this. So it allows for a balance of hmm. perspectives. Um, it doesn't mean that uh, nobody gets to talk to council or staff about things um, sort of not exactly behind closed doors. Uh, the idea is that it happen in the open so that there can be an open dialogue about things. And if you violate it, then there are ramifications. Right, Matt, what, what are some of the other, are, are there other cities that have, that have implemented this and what sort of successes have they had? Uh, Toronto was the first in Ontario to have a lobbyist registry, and the reason they brought it in was because there was a, a, a procurement scandal that happened. They, um, uh, there were a certain number of computers that had been ordered for lease, uh, and this, yeah. through, through wheeling and dealing, uh, they ended up paying twice for them, basically. So they paid double for the computers that they had ordered. And, uh, and there was a major investigation, I think it may have gone into, uh, into a criminal investigation, um, and so they brought in this lobbyist registry, which, um, interestingly, after Rob Ford was elected, uh, the number of lobbyists registering exploded, and people have been lobbying like crazy at mm. City Hall in Toronto. Ottawa brought one in as well. Um, they have a, a couple of examples of what they do or what's gone on. Um, it's, been, it's been the kind of simple stuff, uh, new technology, paving stuff, uh, construction. There was one where they were lobbying about a new entrance to the Canadian Tire Center, the former former Corel Center. So you, it's dialogue, but it should be done in the public because it's a public um, it's a public business. It's our city hall, so we should know what's going on, and there should be rules set up so that uh, so to discourage improper behavior before you have to call in the ombudsman or before you have to call in the integrity commissioner. 